Larry G. with the Inland Valley News here at the Staples Center in preparation for game number two of the playoff between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Portland Trail Blazers. Taking the court, your LA Okay, we got Jeff Ayers pregame. Let's talk about, first of all, what it feels like for playoffs, game number two. Uh, it's intense. Uh, had a good game one. We set the tone of how we wanted to play. Uh, it's been a wild playoffs for, for a lot of other teams, and uh, you know, come in ready for that second game. These guys can come and steal one at our home, so we're trying to approach it. Uh, we haven't won, like we're down a game. So we want to go out even more intense, more focused than we did in game one to get this game. Jeff, what are you learning as a player, a role player? What to do, what to expect, how to stay ready in any moment that you can be called to jump in the game? You always got to be dialed in throughout the whole game. You can't take plays off. You can't take you know, a couple <laughs> minutes off and you know, get distracted because you never know when your number is going to get called. You got to be ready. No, it's not the regular season. But, you know, maybe you might get some time to work it out and figure some stuff out. Like, it's the playoffs. Every minute counts. Every moment on the court counts. So, you know, whatever your role is, if you gotta go out there and foul somebody, you gotta go out there and get a rebound, you gotta get a stop, you need to make a free throw, whatever it is, you gotta make sure you do it to the best of your ability to help the team win. What are you learning in backing up like Blake and DJ and things like that? How do you prepare yourself and what do you pattern yourself from their game? Uh, or do you just, you know, do, know, do I'm you? Trying, I'm trying to be me, man. There you go. Okay. They got things, that, you know, they got their game, I got mine, so, you know, I just try to do, you know, the things that they do that we all have in common, you know, set good screens, roll really hard, rebound the ball, be solid on defense, communicate, you know, and then just add my little flair to, to all the other little things in the game that I can bring. Who'd you pattern your game after when you were growing up? Man, that's a hard question. I don't think anybody, to oh, be okay. honest with you, know, it's kind of just growing up, I was just going out there playing hard, and I always wanted to be the first at whatever I did. So we're doing my running drills or layups or shot, whatever it was. Like I was always out there trying to beat the guards and do all that little stuff. So I don't know, man. I, my game didn't start changing until I got to college. So my, my college coach told me I reminded him of P.J. Brown. So, that's a nice little compliment, man. I'll take that. So you accepted that, huh? You yeah, just... I accepted that, man. And then, uh, you know, as a as like the one of the main guys on my team in college, you know, he kind of he he always told me I was his Tim Duncan. You know, he wanted me to stay around and you know help build the foundation on the of the team. And, I said okay, and it was just really funny that you know. And then I eventually, eventually got to play with Tim Duncan, so it was just cool that how that kind of story kind of came around full circle. Yeah, what have you learned as you know an athlete being in the league, playing with different players? I guess getting that connection. What do you get from you know playing with other players, and how do you apply it to your game? Uh, you just you learn how. You know, you just learn people's tendencies and like. Stuff that I didn't know about the Clippers, you know, being on other teams and then being in here and seeing how things are done and how these guys work out and how they work hard and how everybody approaches the game differently. And you just start to see patterns of how the people that are really successful, how they approach the game, what they do to prepare themselves. And it's not something that they just show up at the gym and they just do it. It's, they worked hard for it their whole lives and you know every day it's they need to win the game so they approach it the same way they're watching film they're studying they're working hard they're working on things they're not very good at they're making sure the things they are good at stay tight so you know there's just all kinds of things to the game that I, I've been picking up from all these guys that I've been around that have been successful in the NBA. How much better do you feel you become as a result of becoming a Clipper? <laughs> oh man a lot man it's been a very good year for me been up and down, you know, from the D League and then getting called up earlier in the season. 
and going back and then coming here for the rest of the season. It's been a very good learning experience for me. I, mean, I enjoy my time in the D League. Got to play a lot of minutes, you know, just shoot some shots and just get a feel for the game, get into a rhythm that I wasn't able to get into. You know, I was sitting on the bench most of the time. So, and then to be able to bring that confidence that I that I got playing in the D League and bringing it here. Now, whenever my number is called, I know what I can do, and I'm gonna make it happen. Jeff, what does it feel like stepping out on the floor with an arena with almost 20,000 people? What does it feel yeah, like? Yeah. All eyes are on you. Say it's like I don't know. It might be a little cheesy, but it's really electric. And you just walk on the floor, and you just feel the energy. You know, it's, it's pressure, it's tense, but it's playoffs, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. You don't want to come out playing lax, you don't want it to just kind of be uh, whatever. You know, you're playing like there's something on the line, the fans are cheering like there's something on the line, and then even more so when you go on the road and you're really in a hostile environment. You know, every time you touch the ball, you get boo, you shoot a free throw, there's stuff flying all over the place. You know, you, people are jawing at you while you're on the bench. You know, it's non-stop, so, you know, that's just, you just need that focus even more so. So, Jeff, I've seen you play in high school. Yeah. And from there to here, wow. talk about living the dream. Man, it's crazy. Growing up in the IE and, you know, it's always every little kid's dream, you know, you want to play the NBA. And, you know, but it started with, you know, having a chance to be able to play college basketball. And we made the most out of that. And next thing you know, people started to whisper to me, like, hey, you might have a chance to be in the NBA. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, so we're attacking that. And, you know, that's my goal. Work super hard at that. Got up here. And then now they're telling you, hey, you're here. You got to stay here. So you got to work even more hard. You got to work harder. You want to stay. You want to keep your job. And, man, just looking back at it, it seems like forever ago, playing, playing the Etiwanda, man, for the championships, man. And now, you know, I'm in the NBA, it's competing for an NBA championship. It's crazy. Yeah, you're a giant amongst boys there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that guy was wild, well, man. And now you're, you're amongst the giants. Yeah, huh? now I'm the average guy, maybe even a little shorter. <laughs> right, right. Well, what is the key that makes Jeff who he is? What's your DNA as far as your ingredients of greatness? I feel like it's just competitive spirit, man. You always embrace the underdog attitude. I feel like growing up out there, you know, I don't want to, you know, we were a really good school. People always thought, oh, you guys are the IE, you guys are soft, and whatever, all this stuff everybody used to say about us. We always use it as a just fuel to make us better. It's just been like, that's been my mentality this whole time. I never want anybody to outwork me. I don't never, maybe you can shoot better than me, maybe you can jump higher than me, maybe you're faster than me, but after a workout or a game or whatever, nobody's ever gonna be able to tell me that that kid didn't play hard. That kid doesn't go hard. He has no fear of whoever he's playing. He's gonna go at everybody. He might talk a little trash, but it's because he, he's feisty, he's a fighter. And that's, that's been my thing ever since a kid, always gotta be a fighter. What do you tell others then? If you really want it, then you just gotta go for it. You gotta work hard. All the little cliches everybody says, you know, first in the gym, last one to leave. You know, ask questions about people from people that know more about basketball than you do, or maybe be better at, are better at basketball than you are. Ask them some questions like, or watch how they work out. See ways that you could get better. Be around people that are gonna make you better. That's the best thing that you could do. Don't be around people that are gonna drag you down, pull you back. Be around people that are going to push you, motivate you. You might not always want to hear what they have to say, but it's what you need to hear to get better. And those are the people that really care about you, and those are the people that are going to want you to be successful. Jeff, talk about your highlight moment in the NBA. What would it, what would it be? What was the point you say, that was Jeff, that was me at my best? Oh, I don't think I've gotten there yet. Okay. So my highlight so far, though, in the NBA, so I was getting drafted, which was amazing, man. That was a great day. Definitely winning the championship with the Spurs. That was, a, that was an awesome experience, man. And to be a part of that team, and, you know, see how they operate, see what it, what it really takes to, to get pushed, to push through that, to win a championship, especially after a shorter summer that they had, making it to the finals the year before and losing. And then having that fire and having it carry over for a whole year to get right back into the same situation against the same team and, and really take care of business. And it was really something special to be to witness and I'm really happy and appreciative that I was a part of it. How often do you 
take out the ring and look at it, <laughs> touch it, if, feel you know, it. Sometimes, show like, it. If I, it's at home, so you know, I don't carry it with me. Of course. But you know, whenever I get a chance to go home and I'm just kind of going through some of my stuff, or you know, I walk in my office, I see my championship jersey and you know, all the guys' autographs on it, or. I'll, I'll pull my ring, put it on for a little bit, tag it out, walk around the house, <laughs> and you know, just slide it back down, and put it back in place. So, somewhat, in some fashion, you've mission accomplished because most people are in pursuit of a ring, but early in your career, you've got one. Yeah, so that's a that's one nice thing I could check off the bucket list. So, you know, but I'm not done playing basketball. I want to play as long as I can. So, there's another one in the future. You know, God willing, that'd be great. Got yeah, a lot more years to try and get get another one. So we'll be all right. I want to shout out to the IE, everybody at one and me. Thank y'all for supporting the IE guys. You know, me, Darren, Kawhi, keep y'all supporting us. We love y'all. We miss y'all. It's always IE love.